Let's knock this out. Let's talk about, again, things that I wish I knew before playing Genshin Impact, all right? So you guys don't make the same mistakes that I do. Starting with number one. Starting with number one. Use your resin. Right up here in the top right, you have original resin, which is your stamina in the game. Use your resin. Don't keep it capped at 120 out of 120. In my advice, I would say start by doing the ley line outcrops, whether it be the Blessing of Revelation or the Blossom of Wealth. And in this case, I would say go for the Blossom of Revelation since it gives you XP uh, for leveling up your characters, which I would say is what you want to prioritize in the first place, character XP. Since all the other stuff like uh, weapons and, and, and talents you'll get through just adventuring and leveling up your... Or, or just adventuring, right? Story quests. Stuff like that. You'll be prov you'll be provided it just through adventuring. Number two, I would say, is use the resin that we just mentioned for enhancement ores. Now, I don't know when you unlock these enhancement ores. If it's locked between, or if, it, if it's locked behind adventure rank or or world level. But the, the ores that I'm talking about are these mystic enhancement ores that cost 20 resin and 5 magical crystal chunks. But you can find these magical crystal chunks next to crystals. And if you're not sure where to find them, find them, you can talk to the blacksmith and say any tips on finding ore. He'll mark or on your map locations that you can go to. And in this case, he has a mark down here next to a woven dom three spots we can go to. I don't know if that's at world level three, since right now I'm currently world level four, but if you can actually find those magical crystal ore, I'd advise using your resin early game. I, I, I'd, I'd honestly say maybe like dump all of your resin into the magical crystal in my the mystic enhancement ores, because later on in the game, there is many more things that you want to prioritize using your resin over. Early game, you don't really want to use your resin on domains, you don't want to use your resin on, I mean, besides like talent up books and and weapon essential materials, the domains are less less worth early on because you're getting these greens. Like the grays, the one stars, two stars, three stars, etc. that you can all farm just off of bosses, you know? So if this is locked behind adventure rank, then once you hit that adventure rank, whatever it may be, I think it's adventure rank 30. For world level three, then focus on that. But before then, I'd say try and focus on plus Blossom of Revelation for your XP and whatever weapon you're using. If it needs ascension materials to level up, um, I'll say number three is just slap on any artifacts that you need, or any artifacts that you come across, just slap them on. Most of the artifacts that you're going to be finding early game, you can just work with, you know? Any, like, two-star, three-star artifacts, slap them on. Uh, I'd say you can even get away without upgrading them. And if you do, that doesn't matter because it can be recycled into another better artifact. But most of the two-star, three-stars that you find around the map will be just through questing, um, adventuring, opening chests, killing mobs. They will be fine. Which leads me into number four. Stay away from the artifact domains. Because, like I said, artifact domains, not worth. You're getting these one star, two star, three star artifacts at such a low adventure rank. Um, like, even now at my adventure rank, I'm getting like one purple. But the thing is, and I'm adventure, I'm, I'm adventure rank 39 at the moment, almost world level five. We're getting one purple from the highest dungeon. One purple guaranteed and the rest blues. The thing is, the artifacts that we're getting from these domains, you can farm the, the same tier artifacts, not the same exact artifact. You can't find a Thunder Fury piece on a mob, but you can find the same, like, you can find, like, an instructor set, all the other artifacts. There are some decent artifacts out there. Blood Soaked, which increases your crit rate by plus 15%. And the instructor set, which increases elemental mastery by 80. You can find those just by killing 
mini bosses around the world or elites, I suppose, right? The Fatui agents, the Ruin Hunter, and the Rock Shield, Shield Wall Metatural, the Abyss Mages, etc. You can get these artifacts from any of them without using up any resin. So, so number five, I would say, is as you're hunting because you want to hunt these bosses down, I'd say, since they're on a respawn timer, as you're hunting them down, you can navigate via the handbook and it'll mark the location. This one's right next to Springvale. However, it doesn't mark all of them. It's not accurate. So as you're going around and hunting these bosses or just seeing them as you're adventuring, I'd say pin them. I say try and make a pin, click on the map, make a pin, label it, you know, the Tui agent or whatever it is. Just mark it on the map. As you can see, I have a few pins on the map. Ruins Guard, Vita Churl, Ruins Guard up there. I have a few pins on the map because I know how inaccurate the handbook is. It hides a few Fatui agents, like in the bottom left corner, there's a Fatui agent down there that doesn't get shown on the map or via the handbook. There's this one up here. So you could be missing out on a few Fatui agents that just are not shown through the handbook. I think there's also, yeah, there's another one over here. Most of these are just not shown. I would say definitely mark the bosses. Plus, it could help you and make things more efficient by just going through. You could kill this Fatui agent, quickly run over here, kill this Mita Churl, run down there, you know, kill this one. You can kill a bunch of these bosses, which can drop loot and artifacts at no resin cost and farm them because you're going to need their materials anyways. You get gold, you get artifacts, you get loot, level up materials and stuff like that. Um, and this is probably the most efficient way to do so besides going through the handbook, teleporting over here for this Fatui. And then like teleporting to a different location and just knocking those out. You could do things to, to kill two birds, one stone, right? You teleport here, kill the mage that I have marked, go up here, kill the Fatui agent, and then quickly head down there, kill the ruins hunter, you know? And for number six, I'd also say mark... So there's, there's four statues of the, of the seven in every area. This is the Animo statue. And in the Liowa area, the Geo area, we have the Geo statue. And to level up these statues, you need these Oculis, whether it's the Animoculis or the Geoculis, depending on which, it's not these, these, these are sigils. But it depends on which area you are in. I would advise, as you're passing an Animunculus or a Geoculus, mark it on the map just for future use. You might think that you're going to remember where it is and you want to come back to it, but don't be like me. Because when I try and worship my statue, I'm at level 9 and level 10 is the max. I'm missing one Geoculus. Just one. And I've been searching for days. To find this one and I just can't find it so if you ever see it on the mini map it'll it'll be an indicator on your mini map it'll show up as like a star and it'll also have an audio cue to let you know that there is a geoculus nearby once you see it once you hear it immediately open up the map and just mark it just mark it for future use trust me you don't want to be like me searching for days for one geoculus you're going to regret it. <laughs> Alright, so number seven. It's going to be Expeditions. And I want to say... Try and take advantage of the Expedition as soon as you can. As soon as you have it unlocked at whatever adventure rank it is. So for example, I have Kea on an Expedition for 20 hours. And the longer you send your characters on an Expedition, the better the rewards are. Four hours, you get... Only four to five iron chunks, two to three white iron chunks. Eight, you get six to seven white iron, and one to two crystal chunks, so on and so forth. Try to send your characters out on an ex- or at least however many you can. I think at the very beginning, you, you can set a max of two, two characters out on an expedition. I'm not saying try to send your whole party because you need them to uh, do overworld stuff and, and story quests, but characters that you're not using. I'd say send them out on an expedition, get some free, get some good 
get some loot, right? Get some materials. You need most of this stuff. The crystal, the crystal chunks and the white iron chunks, I believe, are the most, um, most value out of everything that you can farm. 5,000 Mora, even at 20, 000, or 20 hours, isn't worth. There's other ways to get Mora. I wouldn't advise using it on Mora at all. But the white iron chunks, uh, lotus heads I like to go for. All this stuff is farmable in the overworld as well. But I'd say that the, the crystal chunks and the white iron chunks are probably the best bet in terms of priority. And if you're also done for the day, if you're also done for the day, and you're about to get off, right? You're not going to get back on for another, like, I don't know, 12 hours or whatever. Send your whole party. Say, okay. Try to match your time up. I'm done playing for the day. Even the characters in your party. Barbara, I'll throw them in. You know? White iron chunks will, will come. I'm not going to use, like, I'm, I'm done for the day. I'm done exploring. Amber, we'll throw her in. She's in my party, but that's fine. I'll wake up. They'll be done with the expedition. And I'll be able to get some free rewards for not doing anything, right? Okay. So number nine, I'd say, would be your weekly bosses. Number nine would be your weekly bosses. Right now, you have two of them. You have Storm Terror, which you can get these rewards only once a week. Now you can get your prototype weapon, which you can craft from the blacksmith for a four-star weapon, assuming you have the... Crystal Chunks 50 and White Iron Chunks 50. And then you have the Wolf of the North. So these two fights are weekly fights. My advice would be not to do them and claim the not to do them and claim the prize until Sunday. Monday is their reset timer. So just in case you're able Monday is the reset timer. And as you level up your world. Right now, I'm world level 4. You start out at 0. Just in case you're able to hit world level 1, which happens at adventure rank 20, you'll get better drops. Because every time you increase your world level, boss drops get better. The loot, uh, everything gets better, right? Monsters get harder, but the loot gets better. Which happened to me. I ended up doing my Storm Terror fight and my Wolf of the North, North fight before Sunday. Ended up hitting Adventure Rank 20, increased my world level to 1. Just to find out, I couldn't actually do them again until I, until until the reset, you know? I I guess. Um, okay, so number 10 would be priority on what you should be leveling up. In my opinion, I feel like you should be focusing on just a few characters and not try and invest in way too many. Try to find your favorites, see what works, see what doesn't, find them early on. So you can invest in them. Because there's too many resources that would be spread across way too many characters to, to invest. For, so for my case, it's a safe play to invest in my main character because they are able to resonate with all the other statues. You can change your abilities from Animo to Geo to all the other abilities that come out. So investing in your main character is probably the safest play to do. I also invest in Lisa, a free character that you get via the story. Because she has she's an electric mage that can apply electricity just with a single left click and not rely on abilities. She also has good AoE. And then I also like to use Shangling because I can combo Lisa and Shangling for overload, which is bonus damage. Um, we also, you can still use other characters like Kea, for example. He's level 7. He's not completely useless. We have him on expedition duty because I need someone to do it. But if you want, you can also use, like, the characters that you're not focusing on, you can use them for ele elements. They're, they're ultimates. You can have them in the party. Once their ultimates go off, pop it. I think he has, like, ice crystals that go around him. And applies ice element to opponents that are in contact with him. You can still do that. I still use Amber. Amber is undergeared. She has not the best artifacts and her attack is 181. She's level 40 using a level 1 weapon, but I still have Amber in the party just for her ultimate. 
right? So you can still use you can still use characters that are relatively weak just for some elemental synergy. But I would say focus on just a few characters because there is way too many resources to be thrown out, spread out between weapons, ex uh, weapons, artifacts, levels, talents. And in terms of like what to level up first, I'd focus on character level and then go to weapon level. And then I'd say level up your talents because you'd be surprised at how strong you can get by just leveling up your talents. Right now for my one hit, damage goes from 52% to 57, a 5% increase going from level three to four talents. And I'd say focus on like your auto attack first, probably your auto attack and then your your skill and not your ultimate depending on which character it is i'd go for auto attack first try and try and max that out and then i'd go and focus on artifacts as a last thing which is best farmable in my opinion early game off of just the elites around the map that are free no resin cost whatsoever hey guys i just want to thank you very much for watching i hope the video was helpful to those uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down in the section below. I'll be more than happy to reply to those. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to making more content for you guys.